Welcome to Bean and Bracket Factory and welcome to episode five of the winter rebuild project. Now, the only problem with a winter rebuild project is that it is winter and it has been absolutely freezing in here. Um, all these, all my viewers in Canada, I'm sure are, are saying, what are you worrying about? It's only minus five, but it's been pretty cold. Um, so apologies, it's taken quite a, what, a long time to get this episode out. But um, here it is, here we are. Um, in this episode, I'm going to sort out various bits of bodywork. I'm going to sort out the alternator. I'm going to sort out a few of the bits and bobs. And they get, uh, I'm also going to, have a, going to have a bit of a drive. Excellent. Uh, and get it ready so that I can do some proper testing with the car. So sit back and enjoy. So a few more jobs have been done uh, in preparation for the great initial drive well i've driven it before but i've not driven it since i've re-engineered which virtually everything of everything on the car so it's going to be an interesting um test drive anyway so as you can see uh the nose has gone on um quite a lot of time was spent uh polishing this it was quite pitted so it's still not perfect but it's 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 not too bad it's quite nice um Still going to have to do a mod to this this hoop and weld some ca uh, some captive nuts on the inside because it's very difficult to get to, just to make life a bit easier. Um, what else? Um, I've sorted out all the loom now, so the loom is all sort of tidied up, and and the line that goes to the the rear brake lights has been sorted. Uh, the seat, I've actually had to cut a gap just there in the seat because the torque tube was was hitting the back so if you just push that back you can see that the edge of the torque tube uh, and there's a little bit taken out the back of the seat here but by the time it's all put down it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever so that's fine uh, what else have I done oh I've also connected the oil pressure gauge so um, silver soldered up up these um, these nipples onto this quarter inch pipe this goes all the way uh, to the back of the oil pressure gauge which is just there so um, that's about it really a few other little bits and bobs but nothing major so um, without further ado I'm going to kind of get take it out of the garage and I'm going to start it up and have a walk around and see see what it sounds like when it's running Now back in the garage after the drive and it's time for the post-mortem uh, all in all it went very very well uh, it handled very nicely the steering was was light and responsive it didn't want to weave all over the place it totally transformed to be honest uh, I did get back and notice that uh, some of these were loose uh, which wasn't very clever of me so they're all tightened up again now so um, that was successful now, uh, what next? Um, well, I want to fit a really much more powerful engine there. But before I do that, uh, I've got to put the bonnet on. I've got to put the side panels on and I've got to put the bonnet on. Now, the, the bonnet, um, I did have some cork on here and the aluminium bears on the cork. But what I'm going to change it and I'm going to put some leather, leather straps on there and on there, which means drilling some holes and fitting it with rivets. So. Um, I think that's the next step. Put those straps on, put the side panels on, polish them, make sure the cutouts are all right for the for the track rod, which was fantastic, by the way. Uh, I didn't even, I've not even set up the tracking. It just feels fantastic as it is. Um, so sort out the bonnet and the side panels, and then I can probably take it for a, a more substantial drive. So 
to get cracking. So I'm just cracking on with this leather strap and this is my old um, seal. It's actually made out of cork and it kind of worked alright. It was actually um, sort of self-adhesive. You kind of pe peeled the back off it and stuck it on and it sort of worked but it sort of bunched up. So I'm going to use leather. I'm using leather instead. bought this leather strap. I'm using these, um, they're called um, bifurcated rivets. Brass, solid brass. You put them through and you bend over the, the tabs. So as you've done the first one, so this is what it looks like. I've only got three of these rivets, one in the middle and at one at each end. There's actually two strips of leather to get the right required thickness and down here I've just shaved it. Um, excuse my thumb, I, I smashed it with a hammer. Um, I shaved it so it's tapered down and it gives you the right thickness. Uh, so that's the that's the first one done. Uh, I've got to do this one now. This one's slightly more complicated because it's actually th it's going to be three layers. It needs to be quite deep to get all the everything to lined up properly. So a bit more work on this one. It also needs a little cut out of the side panel. So I'll get cracking on that next. So I've done a bit more on the front and I've fitted this first layer of brown um, leather strap, but I've run out of flipping materials. So and I've ordered some off off eBay. I've not ordered some yet. Um, Shop's not even open until New Year, so what I'm going to do in the meantime is start another little project, and that is to fit this alternator about there. So as it stands, this car doesn't have a charging system. It's got no dynamo, uh, obviously, uh, that's been removed. Dynamo delete. Uh, so this is a little alternator off a, a Kiboto tractor, 12 volt AC output. Uh, so I'm going to do a little mini project on uh, making that, installing that, making a bracket, etc, etc, getting it working. So that's next. So there it is, one alternator, uh, as if by magic. Uh, so I had to make the pulley, and which runs off the camshaft, and also the bracket, which mounts to the um, dynamo housing. Obviously it has no dynamo and then wire up the loon, wire up the regulator and rectifier and hook it all up. Um, so that, uh, if you want to know about that and how I did it, then there's another video. I'm not quite sure what sequence I'm going to, I'm going to release it, but there's either another video or another video coming. And the timing's quite good because I have now got in the post some more leather which means I can finish this job uh, and I can put all the bodywork back on. So I'm going to start cutting that up and gluing it on there. So this leather work is now done. Um, I've glued on these two extra pieces and I've put this rivet on here, which is, which is basically filed flat and is just below the, lev le the level of the leather. So that should be fine, um, but you'll also notice from this picture there's no top hose here and that is because up until now I, I didn't actually have a working temperature uh, gauge, water temp gauge. And I've got this, this sender here and this needs to go into the system. Um, now ideally it will go into the rad, uh, but I don't really want to take the rad out and start um, soldering or brazing anything to it so what I'm going to do is make an adapter that, that fits in this tube here um, and has this sender going into the side of it so that's what I'm going to make next so off to the bench over at the bench and the starting point is this brass hex bar so uh, I chopped a lump off and uh, I had two bits and I started to work on this first bit and I realized it was the long it was the wrong bit, it's too long. So this is the next bit. So what I've done is I've, I've turned it down. So these obviously I'm gonna cut the, cut the pipe and stick it in. And this hole here is for this. And that will, I'm basically gonna silver solder that onto there like that. And the reason it's off center is because I'm, I've left space for another hole, which will go just there so I can have this temperature switch in it. So this is a switch that operates, I think, at 
85 degrees, it will basically um, uh, create a path to earth. That's how the switch works, so that you connect up in series with your, your fan. And when it when it goes to earth, it switches, switches the fan on. Now this um, is a 1 8 NPT fitting. And I have these uh, this tap here, 1 8 It's a tapered tap. And I need the right drill size for this, which I don't have, so I've got to order it. So what I'm going to do is I need to do a bit more work on this. It's currently got a wall thickness of 3 mil. It's a bit chunky, so I'm going to take it out to 2 mil on the lathe. And then I'm going to silver solder that in there. A bit more about silver soldering later as a difference between normal soldering and then I'll probably stick that on the car and when the bits when the drill bit comes I can drill and tap that and stick that on until later date but it'd be quite nice to get there a working temperature gauge so a bit more lathe work on that needed I think now so I've machined this off now uh, and it's much it's got a bigger bore which can never hurt in terms of, of flow of water and now I'm going to solder this on there so what I'm going to use is this stuff which is silver solder now this is plumbing solder and this mel melts at a below 400 degrees C whereas this stuff is more like 600 to 700 degrees C I think it says on here 630 to 660 and this is significantly stronger so i want to get a nice good uh, strong bond here so it doesn't break or fall apart so it's nice and nice tight close fit and what i'll do is i'll put it down put some bits of solder just on the join there so when i'm heating it up I know when it's getting to the right temperature because the solder will start to suck in and when that does happen what I'll do is just um, feed a little bit more solder into there uh, and get a nice tight joint so I think that's what we'll do next it's currently about minus five so um, it's going to take quite a lot of heat to, to get this solder running the whole job has got to get up to sort of 600 degrees six, 650 degrees so that's quite a lot of quite a lot of energy needed to heat this up. It's quite a quite a lumpy, uh, chunky bit of uh, brass, so it's going to um, going to take some time. That let's crack on. It's some time later and I'm back at the bench and this is my piece, this is my job and as you probably realised it didn't really go to plan so I managed to solder this side but it really, I was struggling to get the whole job up to temperature because the, the solder just wasn't flowing so I flipped it over and attempted to solder this side and it just, it just wasn't getting up to temperature, it wasn't flowing so 
Um, that's when I should have stopped really. But what I did is I got the oxyacetylene out and started, I thought I'll just give it a blast of that, I'll get it to flow, it'll be all good. What I did was actually melt the brass. The brass melts at 900. I melted the brass and that's when I thought, right, I must stop what I'm doing, which I did. And it was a, it was a right old mess. The whole job looked like a disaster, like a big run of brass down here. It was terrible. So I cleaned it all up. I warmed up my gas bottle because I was losing the, it was a double whammy really. A, it was so cold that the job was, was cooling down and B, because the gas bottle was cold, the pressure wasn't high, so I wasn't getting a big enough flame. So what I did is basically go indoors. I went into the kitchen, much warmer in there, warmed up the gas bottle, set it all up again, and and resoldered it. And um, I could, you know, you could clean it up a little bit just there. But um, I mean, it's purely cosmetic. And to be honest, I've already invested quite a lot of time in that piece, so I think. That'll do for now. I will stick it on the car, put the sender in there, connect it all up, make sure that uh, it doesn't leak and the temperature gauge works and then I can move on to the next thing, whatever the next thing might be. I still need to put the other bit in there, but I'll, I'll do that when I've got the right, uh, right tools for the job. It's always quite useful to have the right tools for the job, isn't it? Anyway, I'll stick that on the car now. So that's the adapter and sender fitted. Uh, I've topped up the tank doesn't uh, seem to leak but the the truth of the pudding is in the eating so time to start it up and test it and see if we can get it at temperature <laughs> So that was mission accomplished, I think. What was quite good is that I let I, I adjusted the tick over so it was running high, you could obviously tell that, and I let it run all the way around to 90, and then I switched the fan on and it, it immediately sort of fell back and I put the fan back on again and it started to go up again. So you can see that how useful it would be to have a, a, a thermostatic thermostat in there to control the fan. Uh, but when I'm driving, I'll probably just leave it switched on all the time when it's up to temperature. So took quite a while to get up to temperature, probably well, it took a few minutes, probably five minutes or so. So uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next. Obviously need to put the side panels and bonnet on, but um, I also need to fit the, the switch into this body, but that, that can wait. So I think um, without further ado, I will put the bodywork back on. So that's the side panels fitted. Um, it's a bit of a pain fitting the side panel, certainly on the near side, because you actually have to remove the exhaust system and manifold. Um, so I might change that, but all I need to do now is stick the bonnet on. And finally, the bonnet is on. Uh, I've done a bit of polishing, made it look a bit, a bit nicer. Still could do with a bit more polishing, but that's pretty good for the time being. And eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed this. This is um, a little piece that I've made that slips between the manifold and the tailpipe and it's a lambda sensor port and you plug in one of these things which is a, an air fuel ratio meter. Uh, you plug this in and run it up. Um, I'm going to use that to, to test the air fuel ratio and, and try and set up the carb and get it running nicely. So the plan is to actually start to, to run the car and test it and see how it runs, see how it, how it behaves, see how it handles. Um, but if you want to see that, you're going to have to tune into the next episode. So that's it. It's ready. I've got a working alternator, temperature, temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge. I've uh, got no excuses now really, uh, so I think it's time to hit the road. I've got a GoPro, I'm going to stick it on the car somewhere. I'm going to hit the road, I'm going to do some serious testing. I'm going to use the uh, air fuel um, ratio meter as well, so I can check, you know, what actually as I'm driving, whether it's running correctly or not. Uh, I'm going to play around the carburetor. So uh, if you want to see that, hit subscribe and uh, please feel free to leave any comments if you if you want. Thanks for watching.